This song is called Forgiveness. It is time to finally see that I am not who I've believed myself to be. I must be determined to see beyond this world that was made to blind me by hiding the key that could open up the door of my heart to where I know you really are I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside for what was already mine you told me over and over that I was your son but I couldn't hear it finally I, I took a chance and I gave you my life and you gave me forgiveness it is time to open my mind to all the love that I've been running from it is mine to finally receive so I will let it in and let it overtake me I have the key that will open up the door of my heart to where I know who you really are. I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside for what was already mine. You told me over and over that I was your son, but I wouldn't hear it finally. I, I took a chance and I gave you my life And you gave me forgiveness I'm in your heart for always And I cannot It is time to finally see I am not who I've believed myself to be I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside For what was already mine You told me over and over that I was your son But I would it finally I took a chance and I gave you my life and you gave me I can't believe I've been searching for so long outside for what was already mine you told me over and over that I was your son and you gave me forgiveness <laughs> so good. Thank you, Eric. That was really beautiful. That was really beautiful. Just the 
those lyrics. I gave you my life and you gave me forgiveness. And that was what was coming to my mind this morning, you know, the, the portal, the portal from the little self to the magnitude is, is the holy instant. And it's through forgiveness, it's through the letting go of the blocks that we are literally pulled through from one state into awareness of what is ever present, you know, who we truly are. So I, I just love that line, I gave you my life and you gave me forgiveness. <laughs> and then through forgiveness, you know, we're, we're brought home. So. so welcome back everyone, this is our final morning session and I felt to just give a re uh, recap um, of, of where we came to from our opening night and through yesterday to just kind of bring us all in to this morning for this final session which just feels like it's going to be interactive um, with the present healing because you know, that's where the real miracles are is in the present moment and in the present healing, the present call. So yeah, Friday night just starting off with this real clarity from Jesus around littleness versus magnitude and then to hear you sharing um, your present, very present call, like how do I want to let go of littleness, how do I want to experience myself now, just felt like such a beautiful opening into the whole weekend. And then, oh my God, yesterday morning, David's session, reversing cause and effect. <laughs> like, if you want to get really clear about what is littleness, like that was such a full, full, clear metaphysical foundation. You know, there is no, there is no doubt about what littleness is when there's an awareness. It's, it's if. If I believe in separation from God, if I'm perceiving or experiencing myself you know, as separate from God, then that is the world of littleness that I'm in. And, and uh, the healing is this relationship, you know, true cause coming from God and, and undoing this belief that everything else, anything else can be causative, is releasing our mind you know, from littleness. And then the movie yesterday, wow, it was just an amazing journey, you know, that Jason took us on through that movie of seeing this character, Doctor Strange, who in this world was so successful, like brilliant, brilliant surgeon, the best he could possibly be in this world. And yet his state of mind from a spiritual perspective, you know, he was so limited so limited in terms of love and communication and fulfillment. You know? There is such an arrogance there of believing he was in charge and he was the one doing it and it was never enough. You know, he was then picking and choosing uh, what he would do, what his work would be. All for self-glory and, and recognition and fame and, and how we could see so clearly from this perspective that it's it's littleness, it's all littleness. And and it was so limiting that he finally sent himself off a cliff so that his actual journey into his true magnitude could begin. Like that whole world, that whole life, like literally came to an end for him very quickly, which for many of us it does, you know, with a crash and and then his real journey could begin. You know, his spiritual journey of humbleness, of asking for help, of being shown and coming into that prayer of use me for a higher purpose. You know? um, and uh, yeah, I could really see clearly in that movie as well. I think Frank came and was sharing with Jason afterwards and there was something he mentioned that was so clear, he could relate it to his own experience, which was that Dr. Strange initially he felt damaged and he wanted the healing, he wanted to bring 
the healing to himself so that he could, you know, get back into the dream as that character. You know, he wanted to bring the truth into the illusions and heal his body so that he could be free of pain. And the whole goal of the journey is to see that the healing is on a totally different level. You know, to shift from this focus on, on healing the body to be able to personally serve to to a whole different perspective of what healing is. So the body can be used, you know, truly as a communication device and not for not for the ego's purposes. No. So here we are in the final morning and um, yeah, I just feel very grateful to be here and be in this prayer this morning as we give the whole session over to Jesus and the Spirit to, to use it in the highest way possible to lift us all into the experience you know, of being joined in mind together, truly being joined in mind and going beyond littleness, the, any sense of doubt, you know, beyond doubt is magnitude, which includes how we see our brothers. You know, and what we draw forth in our brothers. So, yeah, bring on the healing. Bring on everything that needs to come up this morning to be cleared from the mind so that we can be in the miracle. So I hand it to you, David. Beautiful. Yeah, we had a brief uh, call this morning and yeah, that, that uh, idea of what am I using my brothers for, really that's, that's like an extension of what, what is it that I choose to use the body for. But also, if you look at the dream characters in your dreamscape there and you just take an honest look at what, what am I using them all for, that's, that's the key. Am I using them for spiritual awakening? Have I given them all to the Holy Spirit? And said, Holy Spirit, speak through my brothers and sisters to me. Show me the truth, guide me, lift me higher and higher. And uh, because the ego has its own use for the body and its own use for brothers and sisters, and, and it's a very dark use that the ego has. It's a death wish. It wants to reinforce fear and guilt and pain and shame. And it, it's a uh, it's actually ingenious at coming up with ways to distract you from your spiritual calling, distract you from your function, and we've already established that your function is going to be your magnitude. You will go into your magnitude through the function. So the ego, being a death wish, is trying to distract away from purpose, from function, in any way that it can. And I, I always like that line in the Course, what do you want, freedom of the body or freedom of the mind? For both you cannot have. You may be operating um, in a, a system of thought where you believe that you can have a little bit of both. Uh, that you can have freedom of the body and you can have freedom of the mind. But Jesus says actually both you cannot have. And this is where the ego is so subtle because it's like, okay God, I'll give you I'll give you a few hours a day maybe, or a few minutes here and there, but it basically wants its autonomous use for the body and for all the people in its world to serve uh, another purpose other than awakening. And um, I've noticed in the questions that were written in um, that a lot of times it's still issues around grievances with, with uh, with self, with, with uh, a child, with a neighbor, with, with a relative, with a colleague. And um, the core of those grievances is really the ego purpose of still trying to use the body and the world to s prop up a self-concept and hold a mask in place. And we all love character transformation movies. Uh, yeah, I, I've just seen so many of them, and there's so many in our Movie Watcher's Guide to Enlightenment. But, but last night I, I watched a, a documentary, 
it really wasn't a character transformation movie. It just showed, it was the, it was the life story of Whitney Houston. And basically what it showed was this amazing child with this amazing voice who said, I, my mother made me go to church and I loved it. She was there singing and surrounded by her congregation at the church, her family, and of course they, they had their ego issues still to deal with, but, but it was so nurturing and supportive. And then, and then as I watched the documentary, I could see, wow, here's all the egos favorite defenses against love to hijack the, the gift. You know, Whitney knew from an early age that she had, as she said, a gift from God, this amazing singing voice. And then the whole movie, I watched how the ego hijacked uh, her life's journey and took her into codependency, into drugs, into fame and fortune, uh, isolation, loneliness, disconnection, uh, losing all of her money, uh, lawsuits, um, and, and you could even see it on her face uh, from that gleeful uh, child and teenager singing for the glory of God, and then you could see her face get darker and darker um, as she got caught in the codependency, uh, greed, the family greed, and all these things that were in the movie Almost like an a ego sets a trap to try to ensnare you and take you into darkness, to win you over to the darkness. And your, your function is for the glory of the, the Great Awakening for yourself and for everyone. And, and so it takes a lot of, of clarity. That's why these sessions are so important because, uh, you know, Jesus reminds us in the Course, you know, you know, take not one step on the twisted spiral staircase that leads away from heaven. For having taken the first step, you will not recognize the next, although it will surely come. He paints like a, a dismal picture of going down a spiral staircase, like Dante's uh, hell, uh, descending down away from your happiness and your joy, through this very subtle, cleverly constructed trap where you take one step on this twisted descending staircase and you don't even recognize what the step is. Whitney didn't recognize what she was stepping into and then the next step and then the next step and it just spiraled to the point of having a, a cocaine overdose and at 48 years old uh, having her, her body and face face down in a, in a bathtub, overflowing bathtub with water, um, uh, drowned with a cocaine overdose. And, and that's what's so sneaky about the ego. We have to be very precise. And you have to realize that you're choosing the right mind or the wrong mind every second of every day. You're choosing for heaven or hell every single second. It's not like in the big chunks or the big events. It's not like, uh, since it's Super Bowl Sunday, it's not like you have your Super Bowl Sunday, okay, it's, it's is, am I going to, who's going to win out today in my life? God or the ego? The devil or heaven? You know, we don't tend to think of it is a moment-by-moment moment thing, but moment-by-moment, moment, whatever you are choosing, whatever you are valuing, is your interpretation of yourself and of the whole universe. If, if you are down, if you are dark, if you are angry, if you are upset, then the whole perception of the universe is colored by that. It's like a dark color goes over the whole universe because your mind is so vast that, that what you experience for yourself is what the whole universe in your perception is experiencing. And when you light up, the whole universe lights up. You know, like that song, when you're smiling, when you're smiling, the whole world smiles with you. That's it. And when you're laughing, you know, it goes on and on. This is the way it is. It's one mind, and when you forgive, 
like Eric's song, when you give your life over and you're given the gift of forgiveness, the whole world, the whole universe is forgiven with you. It's that huge of a gift. So really, this morning as we open it up here, I want to hear from you because that's really what the magnitude is. It's like the, the Spirit is offering you and saying, please offer your life in service as a gift to the whole universe. Like the universe is calling out for help. It's crying out for help. It's really an opportunity to be who you are and give the ultimate gift and thereby receive the gift for yourself, to receive the blessing of that gift. It's not a tiny thing. This is not a small thing at all. And, and I can feel you all, you're all here with us and, and I, I really want to hear from you because when I was reading through the questions again today, I, I particularly was struck with Joni from Helmand, Netherlands and, and also with uh, Stephanie, because both of what you wrote in were, were Joni was talking about um, you know, your son and your relationship with your son. My oldest son comes to live with me temporarily for the third time and he beats me with my own words. I would love to have a holy relationship, love to be at peace with him, no judgment or opinion anymore. And every time I go into attack again, while I want to be in love, I have already experienced a few times that I literally attack myself. And so you're saying, I need a new way of looking at my son. I need a reborn relationship. This is, is not a convenience. This is now a necessity. This is now coming to be essential. And Stephanie was sharing the same thing with, uh, she was having some issues with, with her neighbors. Um, so it doesn't have to be a family member. Uh, uh, she wrote, uh, I, I have issues with my neighbor. It is going on for some time, long time. I tried many things, being a nice, friendly neighbor, being an angry neighbor, <laughs> joining with other neighbors being angry, ignoring, and of course the lawyers. It was getting worse. Every time I get a new stone thrown in front of me, I go inwards and look at my mind and find my littleness and also worthlessness. For a moment I see the light and ease, but it doesn't take long and the neighbor, quote, invents new things. Uh, and, and so both of you are, it's gotten to the point where this healing this issue with the neighbor is not a convenience. This is absolutely, that's why we're here having this discussion. That's why we're here today. We have to learn to pluck the grievance from our own mind. We have to learn to pluck that, that angry thought. We have to learn to pluck that out because without that we're, we're going to be in an experience of hell. And, and it is, it's getting harder and harder to, uh, to maintain that experience of hell. It's, it's actually very unnatural. It's, it's taking a lot of effort. So I do want to open it up, as Kirsten was saying, this is such an important part of the weekend where, where you just can put your hand up and bare your soul and, and share. If there's something holding you back and there's something that you've been hiding or something that you've been keeping out of awareness and you want to make a public witness in front of the Spirit and all your brothers and sisters and just say, I'm giving this up today. I'm going to give this up now because I deserve better. I deserve happiness. And I'm not going to let whatever this is that's eating away in my mind to hold me back from experiencing the joy and the peace and the happiness that I deserve as a perfect child of God. And that's what, we're amazed that this can happen in these online gatherings because it's almost like we're all Eighty some of us all gathered together in the same room. We've got everything but the hugs. We'll, we'll work on working on those digital hugs. We'll get our tech team on that. But until then, <laughs> we're going to go for this healing. You know, we're really going to go for it. So 
If you've got something to share, don't hold back. Please, uh, please raise your hand. Yeah, and just a, a quick note, if you have not dared to speak before, you know, um, then, and if, you've got, if you're shaking, if there's that feeling of like, oh no, but oh no, it's not worth everyone's time, this is not important, you know, energetically, if you can feel that feeling, then please put your hand up, you know. Yeah, we really want to hear from you, because it can start off feeling like this is so little, it's not important, but once it starts you know, you find the words for it, it starts coming out of your heart. It's actually really important. <laughs> so, yeah. Mm. Okay, we have lots of hands up. First one up is um, Real Teresa. Go ahead. Yeah, um... <sighs> I'm so grateful to be here and um, yeah, the last few days I've been feeling like I really want to talk, but I feel, um, <clears throat> yeah, just all the fear and anxiety of actually kind of exposing exposing myself but so I'm so grateful you said that Kirsten um I have no idea actually now that I've said I want to talk what I want to talk about I just want to be seen instead of hiding <laughs> I have no idea what to say but um I kind of I'm kind of cracking up because um, on the thumbnails, um, the pictures are our names and mine says real Teresa. And I noticed that the other day and I thought, that's not my name. I had something different written there. And, um, but it was quite pertinent because I thought, well, if there's a real Teresa, there must be an unreal. Teresa and the unreal Teresa is the one that finds it difficult to speak in public and um, but I was really encouraged yesterday I watched the interview with um, David and Corinne and I was so um, yeah encouraged by that because um, you were talking David about how you used to be really shy and I found that really hard to believe because you don't appear that way at all. But, um, and then you spoke about, you know, really what is going on is, um, like for me, if I'm feeling anxious, <clears throat> it's because I'm thinking about what am I appearing like to other people? You know, what am I going to say? I've got something to offer, but I don't know what it is. And um, I'm totally out of the present moment. And so that's why I put my hand up is that I feel like I've got all this potential, all this love to give, but I don't know what to do with it. And um, so, you know, i I sort of remember back when I was a child, I had this really, really simple love for um, Jesus when I heard about Jesus as a really young child. I just felt a connection and it was so simple and so innocent. And I felt like that was what I wanted to focus my life on, even as a little girl. And but, you know, you were talking about Whitney Houston and, you know, all of us, everything seems to get so complicated with the simple joy that I felt when I was younger. And so I feel like I've been seeking all my life to not, you know, to experience that joy and that peace and that love that I felt, you know, that first time when I heard about Jesus and I saw the picture of him surrounded by all the little children. <laughs> but 
that's really all I want. And, you know, I'm kind of hearing more and more and reading the lessons in the um, workbook and the text that it's, it's so simple, but it doesn't feel easy is, you know, just coming back to this moment every, you know, every instant, like you were saying, and that really is my salvation, but I just make this big, huge, complicated, you know, mission of it and feel like I have to be perfect before I speak up or I have to be a certain way so I won't disappoint people and but um you know so I feel like I'm blocking the guidance at um you know what my real purpose is by thinking about everything analyzing everything and you know and whenever I'm doing that I'm I'm not actually available to anyone so um yeah, that's, I mean, there's so many stories and things I could share, but really, I just wanted to speak up and, and um, you know, be seen and, and connect. So thank you. Thank you for that opportunity. Mm, thank you. Thank you, Teresa. We definitely have uh, the land down under. New Zealand and Australia is very blinking on our, uh, in our mind now, and yeah, there's definitely some discussions underway, because we've, I remember going to Australia and for seven consecutive years, and, um, and what we do is we link up, and you're just expressing right here on the online retreat, we do it digitally, we, we come together, and then we, we do have that transformation, we do have that character transformation where our, our story will go in a different direction than Whitney's uh, in the sense that instead of, a, a, we're not in a death spiral, we're not in a spiral of darkness uh, going down like a plane swirling down with smoke coming from it, it actually, we're in a rising up right now and, and I feel just you communicating what you're doing is part of the communications, you know, we, we have our sparks and our ideas and invitations and uh, uh, Collins here visiting from, uh, from Australia and, and, you know, we're just, we're hearing your prayer and I, I, I know your prayer is just to be swept up and be used by Jesus and it doesn't matter what happened in between in your life from that that, that feeling you had as a child to now, because now you're going in a, a different spiral, you're going in a, in a, a vertical spiral, it's going to take you up, and I'm just so honored that you, you're joining with us like this online. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, next is Marguerite. Go ahead, Marguerite. Hi. Um, yesterday, when Jason asked, um, let's go into prayer, prayer and ask um, what you are still holding on to from the ego to uh, not step into your magnitude, or I'm not sure, but we had a prayer together. And the, the words that came up for me was um, responsibility. And um, I'm so stuck with um, thinking that I have to take responsibility for everything the whole time. That, um, you know, this victimhood of uh, this is my fault, I should have, I could have. Uh, past, future, and um, I went to bed last night and um, <laughs> I had a dream of, and in the dream I asked Jason for help. I said, Jason, will you help me? Because I have this victimhood that I keep holding on to and it's, it's reflected in thinking I am responsible for, you know, you name it. And I will say, oh yes, I'm responsible for that. 
And I don't want that anymore because it's not serving me. I want to say, how may I serve? Not how can I take responsible on the level of form? I want to, you know, what the talk was about with you, David, yesterday about uh, the cause, you know, go to the cause. Don't try to meddle in the effect. And uh, I asked in my dream, I asked Jason, will you help me look at that? And, um, and he said, well, yeah, ma, I don't know. And uh, I felt rejected, but I, w I wasn't going to give up. So he, uh, in my dream, he was a teacher at a school. So I went to the school and I tried to find the place where uh, he was going to teach. And no matter what I tried, I could not find the classroom. And I guess that's uh, my experience now. It was like I saw, you know, of course, it's all symbolic. And I'm still not saying, um, yes, Jesus is there. He'll help me. And I can hear him loud and clear. I'm just not fully listening. And I know that. And um, the thing is that... Uh, my experience now is that I keep on holding on to this stuckness and it's um, how it comes out, how it works in daily life. I will hold on to a remote control and not know how it works anymore. And that's very fearful because how can you not know how a remote control works anymore? And sometimes I'm just, I don't know how to take responsibility for this. And I ask and I'm also very done with this victim role though. It's, you know, it's not, it's not working out. I know that, but I don't know what else to say. I'm 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 very very grateful this for this online retreat. I was very nervous for it. A lot of fear came up, and I had such uh, so many insights yesterday. I finally saw what it meant. We're all going home together. That's the only way I can give up this victim role and this um, um, that this whole course in miracles is asking me something of me that I don't want to give this that's when I saw yesterday that we can only go home all together ah <sighs> that was that's the only way I will give up this victim role or I don't know, maybe it's the other way around. <laughs> I don't know. But that's what, what, yeah, I was so, so grateful to receive that insight. And to, I was actually really, really happy to be with like all of you. And I've been so afraid and cooked up in my house and not wanting to see anyone because I'm just afraid of people which makes sense because you explained that, David, I think it was Friday. You know, if you think they're people, blah, 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 you are afraid. That's logical. So it's going very well. <laughs> but, um, yeah, responsibility on the level of form is still very confusing how it is not on the level of form that I have any power it is on the level of the mind. Yet sometimes I can be in situations where I'm just like, I feel absolutely horrible. I don't know what to do about it right now. And it's really deep. The fear is really deep. And also the confusion is very deep. 
and um, yeah, I'd love if you have anything that you would like to say about that, David, I would really love to hear it. Thank you. Mm. Well, I think there's, there's a movie you can watch. If you can find it with my commentary, that would even be better. Uh, but if, if not, I would just watch it for yourself. And it's a, a movie called Click. Uh, and so if you find that movie, I would definitely watch it. Because Adam Sandler is very funny, but he is given a remote control and it, he uses the remote control for his life to fast forward over all the areas that are boring he doesn't want, to go for his personal needs with his wife and, uh, and fast forward over everything with the, the children and, and his job that, that he doesn't want. And then it, it all comes back to him in one giant lesson to see that he's, he's not really uh, put very much attention to what's really important and valuable. He's, he's, he's this, let this remote control take over his life and it brings him to a point of break, breaking out. And then um, I think the main thing that, that you're struggling with right now is, is there's a part in the Course where Jesus says, you may, be, you may believe you're responsible for what you do, but not for what you think. And he says, you are responsible for what you think. And, and that is the inertia that we're facing, because it's like a, this world is like a trap of false causation to keep you feeling like a victim at the mercy of, of things that are too big, too too much out of your control and all of us are with you supporting you at regaining a sense of you can control the direction of your thinking. You can actually choose the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is an idea and the more you choose that idea, you strengthen that, that in your mind and you, you weaken the grip of the ego. So. But it's a very different context. Most people are not aware of the mind. They don't realize that the whole... They think how the world got here was the Big Bang. They don't realize that the world was made, you know, to make you mindless, to distract you away from your mind and your thoughts. And there's no, there's no underlying metaphysical sense of purpose for most people. They just think, Oh, well, there was a big explosion of gases, and then the gases cooled down, and we had planets and and stars and and so forth. But there's there's no understanding of what lies beneath. So it's beautiful that you are are joining in this way because I feel like this will all of this will draw you much much faster into your true calling. It will support you. It will nurture you. And, and you will start to build a, a confidence in this new direction and, and start to feel a spark, like something inside of you is starting to, to ignite or, or have a spark of interest, which, which is what comes first. And then as that spark grows stronger, then, then you start to build more of a confidence. But we're so grateful. And maybe Kirsten, you know, Kirsten and I have talked about this topic of responsibility uh, this was, for Kirsten, this was like a major thing. And, and maybe you can relate to, Kirsten, what it was for you that really started to bring you back into going for that, that responsibility of happiness in your mind instead of going back to the form or going back to the error and like rehashing that error over and over because that's something that was very key for you. Yeah. Yeah, it's just like a, it's a journey, I think, to let go of responsibility because another word for responsibility is guilt. It's like the, it's a misdirection for our mind. And for me, it, it initially was feeling the sense of responsibility or feeling the suffering of the world, wanting to fix it, change it, heal it, you know, outside of myself. And then as I came onto the spiritual journey, you know, it shifted from the environment or saving family members, then it was still there to be healed. 
and it would play out then with spiritual community. I feel responsible for the community. I feel responsible for everyone else's state of mind, you know. And it's just seeing that and acknowledging that this is part of the journey and, and how is this going to be healed within me, this feeling of responsibility. And a huge part of it is about it's in the moment. It's when you can see the direction of your thinking and feel that feeling of guilt and personal attachment or concern. It's about becoming so attentive to our mind and how we're feeling and being willing to be released from that. And then it's like, okay, spirit, use me. You know, use, use me, use this relationship, use whatever it is that I'm involved in, you know, for the release of this responsibility from my mind. And then, in, you know, what the language that we use often is, is undoing the doer. You know? and, and so whatever it is that we're involved in, whatever project, then it's about knowing this purpose underneath. It's not about making sure that something works out well. You know, it's not about feeling responsible to time, like I have to get this finished on time, whatever it is that I'm doing. My responsibility has to keep being redirected to my state of mind. You know, this is the most important thing and having the worthiness, you know, acknowledging that my relationship with God, my state of mind is the most important thing, moment by moment by moment. You know, this is how that sense of personal responsibility gets washed. And, and through this redirection, then you experience more and more the Spirit can come in and do through me, you know, which is what's truly happening anyway. But when there's this layer of guilt and personal responsibility over the top, then it really does seem like I have to, you know, I am doing. So, yeah, for me, I think it's been a, yeah, a lot of washing and a lot of being able to bring my thoughts and my beliefs, you know, of why I'm responsible, you know, to the light and to constantly bring that to the Spirit or to Jesus to ask for help, like help me release this, you know, this belief from my mind. and. Yeah, even when responsibility with relationships, you know, it's and it is like a moment by moment prayer to be released. And when you go through that, there can be this this guilt comes up, like, but I have to, you know, I have to, I need to. And then it's just really applying the course, I need to do nothing, you know. Oh my God, really? <laughs> can I really be with that and allow the healing that comes up? Of, of feeling the responsibility. So I think more and more as we come into our function and come into our purpose, we come into this alignment with the spirit of innocence. And that's that's the prayer, show me the innocence. You know, bring me the experience that, that I'm just responsible for being connected with you. And I can forgive everything else. You know. So... Yeah, so just with you in the prayer and in the healing, it's practical. You know, it's day by day facing this and and being in the prayer of having it washed. Yeah. yeah. Did you feel something? Yeah, I did. Yeah, I, I guess um, it perhaps run, runs in the family, <laughs> this sense of responsibility. And... Uh, for me, it was always that sense of responsibility uh, to or for something outside of myself. And one of the big breakthroughs for me was just to, to be able to say, this is not my job. Uh, and it, it started when I started on the spiritual journey, feeling that I was responsible for other people and the state of their minds. Um, again something outside of myself but what I could see there was that what I felt responsible for was something that needed to be healed in me and so it was a reflection of something uh, that was helpful actually 
But then as it started to get washed and, and I was really in prayer, as, as Kirsten says, moment by moment, this vigilance for, am I in the spirit? Am I really connected here? And when I'm connected, I can see more clearly that what I feel responsible for is actually, it's not my job, it's not my business. Um, and I, I can't actually have control over anything in the form or on the form level or for other people. And, and that in the course is a very deep teaching that we, we have no control over the world we made. And so once we actually get that on a deep level, that starts to bring us inward too to the truth because we're actually aligning ourselves with that deep truth, which is the spirit within. And so it all really comes back again to that inward journey. What is this? And now can I be in service from there? Not to be responsible out, outwardly, but can I now come from this, this place of being joined in that deep truth? Mm. So, yeah, thank you, Teresa. Yeah, mm. Thank you. I had this thought very, very deeply planted in me. And I was so grateful because the thought was very, very clear. And it said, enlightenment is not personal. And it was such a relief for me. I know I read about it. I know I thought about it. But this time, it was really, really deeply planted. And I wanted to say that the reason why we're so drawn to Jesus and David is because they dropped Jesus and David from the equation. And I had this deep, deep realization that forgiveness is not even personal. Personality has nothing to do with that. And I was very, very happy to realize that because I know if I put this into practice, it's going to speed up things for me. So uh, thank you. <laughs> Thanks, Leslie. <laughs> we can feel your joy. It's like, hallelujah. <laughs> we can let go of the person, finally. <laughs> Uh, <laughs> wonderful. <laughs> oh, that's so cute. Mm. Mm. <laughs> Next is Stephanie. Go ahead, Stephanie. Hi. Hello. Do you hear me? Yes. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay. Thank you for reading my story about the neighbor. It feels like uh, when you read it, it was like I had given um, my responsibility over now to, to the Holy Spirit to take care finally, to really trust. So that I, that I don't really have nothing to do, <laughs> just to trust mm -hmm. and to trust in my magnitude. Because I really was like, when I wrote this, I was really thinking, ah, should I write it? I hate this neighbor, <laughs> but he is really my rescue and to remember my magnitude and I'm so really ready to remember this and to trust in it. So, as I said, this 
I want also to um, address a question actually f about the movie from yesterday. Um, the whole day today I was thinking about the, the um, uh, it was, I was, it was uh, Baron Moro, the black guy at the end, as he left, he said, I don't want to be with you. I, 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 everyone lied to me. And then he left. And somehow, um, I don't know why, why I'm thinking the whole day of him. Because, you know, this Mr. The Doctor Strange, he was like getting Hans Summer and, and uh, he was a star actually because he, I felt he was a star and this uh, um, Baron Moro, he said, oh no, everybody lied to me and then he left. Perhaps, do you have any idea what's going on? Why did he like leave? Hmm. Well, I could share when I saw that, that uh, scene, um, I think he'd, in a way, there was like a deeper learning for him almost of a deeper loyalty of, of really listening um, beyond. And at first when... Dr. Strange was pointing out how the ancient one, he was saying, it's not, it's not all what you see. It's not everything that it seems. And he started to get, realize that she was accessing almost like using some, they called it the dark power as well as all the wisdom. And Morrow, is it Morrow? Is that his name? Yeah. He was, he was so loyal to her as a person, almost as a, as the teacher that he was saying, no, 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 you know. And I think something popped in his mind, almost like, whoa, okay. Dr. Strange had gone beyond that almost to seeing that there's nothing wrong. It's, it, you can draw on whatever is helpful for the awakening, even if it seems to be almost like using, yeah, using everything, drawing on everything to support with the awakening. But Moro just still had this, the most a sense of his loyalty had been misguided or betrayal or something that came up for him. Like, no, I have to find a deeper way. I have to find what it is for me now. So I saw it in that way that it was, it was more of an expansion from almost a blinded sense of like, no, no, this is the only way to, oh, I have to find something else within myself, like to follow. That was the sense I had. And then probably in the sequel, it's all going to come around <laughs> in the next movie <laughs> to these mighty companions because they have such a powerful mission together. And uh, yeah, but it's great for you to just share what it brought up for you in terms of like, oh no, is something, has something gone wrong? Has he lost his way? Or, or even if it's that sense of betrayal, what it taps on for you. Yeah. What comes to mind, too, to me, is that there's a workbook lesson in The Course of Miracles, which is, uh, I trust my brothers who are one with me. And I've had people tell me, it's like, oh, no, I, I just can't, I can't go, I can't join with Jesus on that one. I trust my brothers. Because if, if Jesus knew what I know about my brothers from, from what I've experienced and from what I've seen with these eyes, uh, trust is the last thing that he, that I would be asked to do. But ultimately, um, that line of, of like, I have to leave everyone, everybody lied to me. In the end, you start to realize that all the bodies uh, are part of the lie, that the, that the ego made all the bodies up. God, God didn't create any body. Uh, this, this is a defense, this entire cosmos, including all the billions and over time the trillions and trillions of bodies are all part of the lie. They were set up to lie. Uh, they were set up not to speak the truth. And, um, and then even Jesus telling us, when he says, I trust my brothers who are one with me, he's really trying to 
help us learn that our brothers are spirit and have our brothers aren't bodies and our sisters aren't bodies. They have never been. Uh, that is not their reality. They were never created like that. They're projections and we're simply trying to see outside what we don't want to see in, in our mind. So they're like, they're like walking lies. They're walking around acting out <laughs> all of our own self-deceptions and we should be grateful for that because we're not in touch. It's, all of our lies are unconscious and we're not even in touch with our unconscious mind. So we need these characters to like act it out on stage for us so we go, oh yeah, I, I really do believe in abandonment or I do believe in betrayal or I do believe in rejection. So they're actually doing us a favor to forgive in a faster way because they're, they're actually acting it out. And, and that's important because even in terms of perception, Jesus is saying that even when you reach the happy dream, even when you reach true perception, even when you reach the real world, it's not going to last very long because whoosh, God will take the final step. Uh, he's even giving us a heads up that, that the happy dream isn't it either. That it's, that's just a step in the right direction. That God is so loving and there's so much love and light available that, that even the happiest scenes, the biggest smiles, the, the most beautiful songs, the most beautiful bursts of joy will all fade quickly into the light of truth when the time comes. And so it starts to give us permission to start to really not put a lot of credence and, uh, and read a lot of meaning into whatever the forms are. Uh, in my life, you know, it's, I've loved going to third world countries and, and I don't shy away from blood and guts and bones and, and whatever uh, things that, that come to me now, you know, I, I don't like turn away or, or feel nauseous or, or feel a sense of, of unease or discomfort. It's like it's, there's a softness, it's like a real softness because I'm simply not uh, trying to look for meaning, trying to read meaning into anything. And even when people come and they tell me this real dramatic story, usually I just kind of have a smile on my face, a slight smile, and just like, okay. I mean, you know, it, you heard one story, you've heard them all, you've, you've seen one movie, you've seen them all. It's feeling more and more like that because I'm simply not reading the meaning into it. So it's, it's good practice like you've had with your neighbor, Stephanie, because there's just concepts in there of what, how a good neighbor should behave, or for Joni, in the Netherlands, how a good son should behave. You know, we've just had expectations about these characters that uh, they're supposed to act a certain way. And the more we get into forgiveness and we get into our magnitude, it, it becomes really irrelevant. The, the behavior becomes irrelevant because we're not interpreting. We're not interpreting and reading meaning into the behavior. So we're, we're really right there with you in this. I mean, this, you're really getting down to the nitty-gritty of forgiveness uh, when you start to have this like a long-running battle <laughs> with the neighbor going on and then uh, suddenly you're just going to say, no, this is, I'm really going to drop this from my mind because I am not really benefiting at all from, <laughs> from preserving this. Uh, it's just not serving me anymore at all. Thank you. Okay, up next is Sylvia. Go ahead, Sylvia. Sylvia. Mm, thank you. Um, about what I said, was it yesterday? I think I don't even remember about sound. Uh, yes, it was yesterday. Um, no. What I want is a holy relationship with myself and with the Holy Spirit. 
and um, I could see myself this afternoon um, after having a, a walk in the moorlands. I was in my room and the, the sound was there again. Um, I think I was in, in, in connect, uh, connected with the Holy Spirit. I think. Um, I don't know if I'm suppressing things. Um, is that the right word? Um, you know, there was some kind of fear of letting it go. There was some kind of pull from the ego. No, this is something you need to be, you, you have to get angry at. Um, and there was peace. Can you say something, David, so I can see you? Yes, yes. So you, yeah, you thank you. No, no, that's, yeah, I want to say more, but I want to I look at your face. Um, there was, I could see myself, you know, I'm, I'm, it's such a, like I said, the Pavlov system is there. It's such a automatic reaction. Oh, this is something, now you have to get angry. And I could see that. And there is still a bit of fear in there to let it go. But I do want to let it go. And I want to build on my relationship with Jesus. Because um, last week weekend, I also had a retreat with Coach Jansson. You know him. And um, he said something about if you read in the course with the ego, then, then there's confusion. And I could see, um, I looked something up about what you said um, after my share and I started reading it and there was confusion and I remembered okay now I need to hold the hand of Jesus so and then I put out my hand Jesus please hold my hand and there was clarity but mm -hmm. the ego the ego is indeed so sneaky I sometimes I sometimes don't even see when it creeps in like when I was walking on the moorlands this afternoon, just to, to clear my head and, and talk to Jesus. I just, I, I just go walking and talk to Jesus, tell him things that are on my mind. And suddenly there's this, oh, I'm going to the, the snack bar to uh, get some fries and blah, blah, blah. You know, the eating thing is coming in again. And I believe that I need that. There is such an urge in my, in my body, like when I'm reading the course, there is that sometimes I don't want to eat. So the, the ego um, builds in the, the orgasm. Okay, then there's suddenly an urge to, to, to have an orgasm. And I believe that. So I want to I wanna trust. I want to trust in Jesus and, and getting it way more earlier than I see I have to take his hand he is my answer i know the holy spirit jesus i call him jesus or i call him jay because in somehow in english i can say jesus but in dutch it's jesus then something happens that's i don't know i asked him at the moment this afternoon that's strange right so i call him about talking about a mind fuck <laughs> <laughs> Jesus, Yeshua, Jay, whatever works for you. I think you're on to it though, Sylvia, because um, when you notice that that anger come up so quick about something, like what's underneath that is that there's a belief that anger is protection, and that is a very deeply rooted belief. You know, just like if somebody comes to your house, sometimes they'll even teach self-defense, like, you know, let your rage come out or scream or do something very strong and very aggressive uh, to protect yourself. And I think you're onto it that there's all these sneaky, clever ways where the ego says, protect yourself. And uh, when we go deeper, we start to realize anger is certainly not a protection. That that basically generates fear. We feel guilt after we're angry, always. 
and we feel fearful after we feel guilty. And so it, it takes us in a downward spiral. It doesn't take us towards Jesus or towards heaven at all. But we, we have to slowly let ourselves be washed of this idea that anger is protection. That there's this idea that we've had called righteous anger, uh, where people, it's still taught. Uh, I, I hear politicians talk about it. I hear people on television talk about, you know, you should be angry, righteous anger. And then the Course is saying, anger is never justified, pardon is always justified. And I, I really hear, Sylvia, that you're working on applying that to yourself. You're really working on the self-forgiveness in your mind to let that first initial protective thing come up. And it could be anger, it could be, I, I need food right now, I need an orgasm right now, I, I need something. Uh, and that's another form of, of defense and protection away from the holy instant. It's like trying to grab for something familiar or something of the world to like, it's almost like to placate, to get just a little bit of satisfaction uh, because there's a big fear underneath of fear of loss, of fear of abandonment, a fear of if I follow Jesus all the way, what will become of me? Uh, what will become of my world if I keep following Jesus in a very non-compromising way. And this was coming to me this morning too as I was driving over here that, that just like throughout the last 2,000 years, there are those that just listen to the words of Jesus and they go, well, sentimentally, I'm with you, Jesus, uh, but not, don't go too far here. Uh, don't, don't ask too much of me. Uh, you know, like I'm not going to become a fanatic here, whatever I do, I'm still going to be me. You're you and I'm me and I'll lean towards you a little bit, but I, it's almost like the mind that wants to dabble in its spirituality, like, oh, I'll do a few practices, but I'm still me. And I'll do the course, but as long as it doesn't change my lifestyle. I, I, a lot of people will say, I don't want this Course in Miracles messing with my lifestyle. Uh, I wanted to improve my lifestyle, <laughs> but uh, I don't want it to take it away. And ultimately, Jesus is saying, you're not really afraid of the light. You're not really uh, afraid of, uh, you know, the means toward that light. You know, it's, it's where this is heading that scares the ego to no end. It's, it's saying that if you keep following Jesus in such a devoted way, that destruction will be the outcome. And so I just say hang in there with it and just really be honest that whenever you notice any of those little things, just allow that, allow that anger up, allow that emotion up. We're not here to push it away or repress it or, you know, try to handle it in kind of a worldly way, but we are here to allow it and Jesus knows what we can handle, you know, bit by bit as we move along. And I, I, I feel your sincerity. You're, you're like saying, yes, I am going to do this. I'm going to go for this. And we're, we're really right there with you. We really appreciate you and all that you're sharing. Thank you. Mm, beautiful. Okay, the next hand is Lenny. Go ahead, Lenny. Hi, everyone. <laughs> oh, there's been so much going on this last weekend, uh, the last days. I don't even know where to start. I have my mom sitting here next to me. She actually broke her arm. I don't know. Oh, sweetie, I think, sweetie, you have to go to the living room. I have <laughs> Somebody else wants to speak. Someone else wants to play. Wait, hi. David, Alicia, now is your time. Your spot. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> oh. David, we can oh. today. You put the good papa. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> oh, <God. laughs> <laughs> now all the fishes are in the living room, so um, well, I just I just see that. 
<laughs> yeah, it's just a symbol of like it's really feeling chaotic right now for me. I just feel there's so much going on, and I don't really know. I really feel that I want to share, but I also feel like I don't even know where to start. I'm kind of having this thought, oh, this will take like half an hour to, <laughs> to talk about everything. And then I, yeah, I kind of get in this state quite often where I feel there is too much going on and then it's just overwhelming to kind of get back to the right mind. So, because it's it's like I can't even grasp where am I right now? What's the problem? What's What's the root of it? Where... I definitely feel that I've gone wrong, but I don't know. Like, I don't even have one thing to to hold on to. But yeah, I'll make a try. So yeah, I mean, with everything going on, um, I really had a really bad uh, uh, Thursday night. I was really sick. I had kind of a stomach flu or something. I don't know what you call that in English, but I kind of threw up once an hour the whole night. So that was kind of exhausting. And then, yeah, um, then the, the online retreat started on Friday night for us. We were in Sweden, so it's always late. So I kind of prioritized sleeping. So I didn't go up two in the morning till four in the morning. And that, that felt good. I mean, that's like, wow, a step in the right direction <laughs> because it would have been so easy to just push me to, now you paid for it, now you go up and you watch it. That's your, your private time paid for. Like you, you have to grab that piece. Yeah, so I was really pleased with myself that I felt that guidance that I'm going to, prioritize me sleeping so I had a very good night's sleep and I was so happy with that and so I woke up in the morning and yeah I was kind of just going along and flowing along and thinking yeah what's this day going to bring me well it brought me a broken arm <laughs> <laughs> so my mom stood at my door nine in the morning and like Oh, I slipped and fell when I was up. And I was like, what? What were you doing up? You? She had the same stomach flu as me. And, and I just thought, well, oh my God, why didn't you sleep? But yeah, so there she was with her arm. And I immediately just got the feeling, we have to take you to a doctor. I want this x-ray. There's something wrong with your hand. Because she was so convinced. No, no, no. It's just a little <laughs> bruise. Some, uh, nothing big has happened with my hand. And I was like, you are going with me now. <laughs> so we kind of went in the car and we spent the whole day in the yeah, emergency room. And uh, yeah, well, she uh, broke off the whole bit of the arm bone, so <laughs> the larger bone in the hand. So it was a really severe fracture and they spent the whole day like <laughs> examining it and trying to pull it in the right place and putting, yeah, what do you call the yeah bandage and everything on. Yeah, yeah. so we actually drove Constant. home like, when the retreat, the, the, the Saturday session started. So we, so we put the retreat on <laughs> in, Zoom, the car. in the car, <laughs> so we didn't miss anything. <laughs> so it's just been going nonstop. But I, yeah, I mean, what's really coming up for me is that I'm, I know that some of you know a little bit about yeah, my life and things I've been sharing before. But I'm, I have had so much help from my mom. She has really been handling so much. We have, we have a farm, like a little farm, but still we have two horses, two cats. I have a little daughter. She's two and a half. And uh, that's my, yeah, I don't know what to call them, partner, boyfriend, husband, no. Yeah, the, the father of Alicia. And we're both working almost full time. And I mean, there's so much to handle. And my mom has been a really big 
trust for me to lean on. And she's been taking care of much. And I mean, as you can imagine, with one hand and it's winter here in Sweden, I mean, she won't be able to do all the stuff she's been doing. Mm -hmm. So what I'm sitting with is a feeling, of course, I mean, I feel that there is no question. I will have to do a lot of stuff. But I still have this sense of overwhelm and like, how will this go? Because I mean, this will take a while. It's not just one week, it's like eight weeks. So, I mean, one day, it's it's one thing one day, like this is Saturday when, when we had this, when we had, when we went to the emergency room, um, it kind of felt so supporting having having this. It felt so supportive having this uh, online retreat because I first I thought, oh my god, what, why did this have to happen when we have the online retreat? But then I kind of switched after a while, and I thought, well, oh my goodness, what what a blessing that it happened that the the. the uh, we can then we had this online retreat because I mean I wouldn't have I wouldn't have been able to stay in the right mind as much as I, as I have done if if it hadn't been for all these sessions so I really felt the the even if I'm sharing a lot of she's <laughs> coming in and out <laughs> you have no control over the world you made. Well, what a beautiful <laughs> demonstration of that. So, yeah, it's just, it's just trying to go with what's going on. Yeah, I mean, even if I'm sharing what is what is hard for me, what I'm, what I'm feeling is my challenge. I also feel that it's such a blessing what has happened. I immediately felt when when Gertie stood on my front porch Saturday morning with a yeah broken arm, I felt, oh my God, after like 10 minutes first being angry and, and like, why did this have to happen? Then I felt, oh my God, this is for me. This is for me. So I really feel that on a deeper level, this is for me, but still I have this, oh my God, how am I going to handle all of this? for the coming weeks. So that's kind of, yeah. yeah. I think you get the picture. So if you, yeah, you can really, I'd like you to speak a bit, maybe Chris or David or, yeah. <laughs> uh, is it okay if I just come in for a little while, Lenny? No. No, okay. <laughs> because we share the computer today. I don't yeah. have an, a computer. Yeah, well, we can we can talk a little bit about this because I think um, this is really a good opportunity for really zooming in. It's almost like you're merging two of our online retreats. We're 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 into stepping into magnitude, but you're bringing back undoing the doer because uh, the idea of responsibility is like the what drives the doer. And when the doer is driven by this deep sense of responsibility, like, I've got to do this, nobody else will do this, uh, then there's a very much a sense of overwhelm. The, the images spin so fast that uh, you lose even the sanity of thinking, well, I need to have moments of focus, like, like even throughout a day, I need to have periods of time where I love myself enough to really step back, and whether it's an open-eyed meditation where you're, gonna, you're just going to watch your daughter, and you're just going to watch the images with eyes open, or closed-eyed meditation, you have to come back to that place where you see how valuable it is for you to step back and, and be the observer. Uh, because when the mind is so driven by that false responsibility, it has forgotten that it's responsible for its happiness and it's totally dropped off into 
all the swirl of worldly responsibilities. And when that happens, it gets very overwhelming very quickly. Almost like, a, like I give up. Like, I'm, I'm not a dreamer of the dream. I am a, a dancing figure in this dream, and I am at the mercy of, of the dream. Uh, you know, it's almost like a, it gets insane. Like you, it's like a, you feel like you're a, at the mercy of the entire world. Like it's just driving you mad, slowly driving you insane by being off in some place in your mind where you don't really want to be. So if you remember that the world is, is upside down and backwards, you know, this is where like Jackie has had to have these conversations, even with her. It, it, it's not just with small children, it's, it's with the grown adult children. This pattern will just continue on when they're 20 years old, when they're 30 years old, when they're 40 years old, the pattern will, will still continue unless you come to a point of seeing how valuable it is to break the pattern of the false responsibility. You, something in you has to rise up, just rise up and say, I am worth it. I am so worth this. And as we've been sharing for some weeks, nobody jumps from being the doer into just pure being. You don't go from the doer into pure being. There's a phase in between where you get so prayerful and you say, if there's anything at all, that you would have me do, Spirit, Jesus, whatever it is, you get so into that devotion of, of giving it over to be done through, that that brings a peace to your mind in a very practical way. So your daily activities, you know, may continue, like Jesus says in the workbook, it is possible to listen to the voice for God all throughout the day without interrupting your regular activities in, every, in any way. But, but that's going to take a real desire in your heart to, to shift that over to being done through. And we're all here for you. you know, that's, that is what the value of this retreat is. In the middle of this circus, <laughs> you, you actually are able to tune in uh, in the middle of the circus, and that shows you right there that you value it. You do value it. Yeah, it's beautiful. As you're just there together, I can just feel, I feel so much love. I feel there's so much love between the two of you, and then you, Lenny, with your little girl. Just, it's so beautiful, and I just get this feeling, there's this call for love underneath everything that's playing out. And really, it's God calling. There's a miracle impulse saying, let me love you, you know. Come just be with me, relax into just being with me and let me love you. Mm. <laughs> and it is just a moment by moment, really watching what, you know, where we're coming from, like having horses there, that's meant to be a gift from God for you to be in the presence of love and extend love. But the ego will turn them into a personal responsibility, like I have to take care of the horses or someone has to take care of the horses. You know, and then there is a guilt of, of maintaining this responsibility for them. I had horses, so I actually know <laughs> what it is to have horses. <laughs> you know, it shifts from being, you know, like, I love them, I love them, to like, oh, I have to make sure they're exercised. I have to make sure there's the connection. You know, there's this feeling of responsibility and guilt that creeps in. So, yeah, I feel like it's so integrated, like just what, what the others have been sharing too, you know, how to stay with this miracle impulse and then see it rise up and then it becomes this guilt and this responsibility. So moment by moment, we have to come back to the connection of joining together and, okay, help me, be with me, let me let go of responsibility in this moment and then really see what truly needs to be done you know, from this place of peace. And can we dare to let go of the world together? Not just for the day, the beginning of the day, but as a practice, you know, throughout the day. What is really most important here so we can stay joined? 
So I feel that. I feel even the broken arm. It's like, it's a call for love. It's a call to slow down. It's a call to surrender. It's a call to simplify and to be in that prayer together of what's most important. You know, what is most important for, the, for this day. Okay, lots of hands still up. Next up is Tina. Go ahead, Tina. Hello. Can you hear me? Yes. Yes. Hi, Tina. Hi, sweet angel, <laughs> Kirsten. <laughs> uh, I'm I'm one of them who is actually trembling when I when you ask me to speak. So I I appreciate your encouragement, uh, Kirsten, to to raise my hand. <laughs> uh, for me, it's like. Um, um, it, this was actually the first uh, online retreat I felt um, attracted to to join. I, I I felt like yes, this is it's time. Like step into the magnitude. I I could feel the spirit. I can feel it. Like it's time now to do this. And I see in my life um, where symbolic things happening that is uh, um, confirming that uh, on the on the on one hand, but in the, on the other hand, I'm, I'm, I'm still stuck in so much old uh, patterns and uh, fears, and it's, uh, it's playing out through my, my relationship with my ex-husband and our situation. It's been going on for so many years, and uh, uh, I'm, I'm really so tired of it. Um, it's like the two of us is stuck in the same circle of, of fear. Um, and it's about the economics and the responsibility that's coming back also now. Uh, we have four children together. And uh, two years ago, I took the step out of this, our marriage. I divorced him. And I also took the, the big step out of the, the business. We were running a restaurant for over 20 years together. Uh, and it was really scary for me, and I, I didn't feel the support from him at all. The opposite, he was always telling me, uh, like, I'm destroying what we are building up, or I, ha I had that feeling, and um, like, you, you, you don't see, you spit on your own plate, and every, et cetera, et cetera. Uh, and now he, like, we're still in this situation, he lives here because of the economic situation and he's, he's still in the restaurant, but I can see he's really suffering from it. He, he, I can see my own, I, I understand that it's my own fear. I, it's reflecting through him uh, because he don't know, he's very confused. He, he don't like to be there, but he's too afraid of stepping out. Uh, what will happen? How can we... How, how can we manage economically with this life we, we live with the, the four children? And um, yeah, so I, I'm just so tired of it. And uh, I understand it's, this, it's the lesson of forgiveness, of course. Um, but it's, it's, it's like we just go walking around. It's, we're not getting anywhere. And it's, um, yeah, I think I just needed to to bring that up in the light. I'm tired of it. I'm, I'm, my prayer is for another experience. Uh, I understand everything like this is my lesson. He's actually one of my greatest teachers. I can see all of this, uh, the beauty in it and the, the, the need of what's, what's um, I mean, the need for healing. It's my mind that's actually healing, but uh, Still, I'm, I'm tired of it now, and I, I, um, I wish I could have more trust, because I think I still don't trust that, that um, 
spirit will take care of this. I think I, I need to find a solution and I cannot. And he, he cannot either. He's totally confused. And um, uh, when, I, when I started to tell him, talk with him about trust and all this, he just answers like, uh, you, you will harm yourself by thinking this way. And, and he's just re reflecting my own doubts. I, I'm aware of that. <clears throat> but um, it's still happening and I'm, I'm still experiencing it and I'm, I'm tired of it. So maybe you can help me with, uh, with some kind of prayer and uh, I don't know. I can understand everything that you're saying and what the teachings are saying, but I still feel stuck in it, like, like sticky, like a glue. I don't feel we're getting out of it. Like, so that's what I wanted to share. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Oh, thank you, Tina. You know, it, it is bringing back a lot of what I watched in that uh, Whitney Houston movie uh, with uh, the relationships in the family uh, and the and the partnerships and so forth, but underneath it, um, I really see that that the ego's use of of people and bodies is very much a part of reciprocity. It's very much tied into economics. That that uh, relationships are very much not different than the buying and selling of objects in the world, uh, the possession, the ownership. The uh, you I'll do this, but you need to do that. It's so it's a it's a dark belief system that is very serious, and and when it loops year after year after year after year, it just feels very dark, and it feels not like it life at all. It it almost is like a facsimile of life, just like getting involved in a business. I mean, with the People like to make categories and they say, well, having a restaurant is different than having children. But, but to the ego, it's not. To the ego, there's, it's the same bargaining, it's the same work, it's the same responsibility, it's the same distractiveness away from mind training, away from uh, what are the thoughts, what are the beliefs. And we've had a pretty much of a theme running in here around responsibility, where people uh, throughout this whole morning have been talking about being weighed down by this. And it's almost like, uh, like you coming over to the mystery school was, a, was like a time out, uh, like a reorient, like, wait a minute, come reorient to back what's really valuable in my life. Why am I here? What is my purpose on earth? Um, if I'm in something that's very looping and repetitive and heavy, then it cannot be your purpose. You know, God's purpose is not for you to feel that way. And I know for myself, when I was years ago experiencing those same loops, I, it was almost like I was caught on a planet and I had to find a way to rocket out of the gravitational pull of the entire planet. Like, uh, it, I was seeing it everywhere. And I was feeling like I have to give myself full permission to go for something that seems very unusual on this planet and very radical even. Um, but for me it was becoming more essential, like I have to do this. And, and I think the starting point right there, if, you're, if your ex-husband's living there, you have the children, the, the restaurant, if it's all right there, it's almost calling for, I would say, like a radical honesty and a radical communication. Because if you try to just stuff some of these things that you're feeling down in, into your mind, that's not going to help you at this point. You're going to, to have to be able to speak up and let the chips fall where they may. Let the chips fly where they may. Uh, Lisa's come into the uh, studio right now, and when I met her, she had uh, two teenagers running her house. The house was a mess. Uh, she was doing working full time uh, at work, and she was feeling very much like uh, like Lenny was just talking about, totally overwhelmed. 
and and yet we had to have a starting point. We have, you know, no matter how heavy, no matter how overwhelming, no matter how dark it seems, there has to be room for that ray of light to come in uh, to really hit your heart and to really activate you. And then when you start to speak it up more, in, in the case with Lisa, she had to speak up to her teenagers, you know, things are going to change. Uh, my relationship with God is very important. Uh, things have to change. And then the, the, the doubt thoughts reflected back, no, no, you're the mom, you're the this, you're the that, you know, you must play your role. No, actually this is too important. You, we cannot serve both God and money. We cannot serve both God and earthly concepts. You know, God is spirit, God is light, and the earthly concepts, if we give our mind over, it doesn't matter how many years we've given over, 10, 20, 30, 40, it doesn't matter. It will either continue almost like Whitney's spiral into death, or it will rise up. And really, you're at a, like a turning point. You know, this is going to take everything that you've got in your heart to make that turn and, and take those steps. And I think it was Charlotte who we talk, I talked with on uh, Friday where she was saying that she was taking some steps that her dream character is not used to taking. She was actually starting to take some bold steps of what she really felt she should be doing and what she should not be doing. Instead of just letting those hover down there, she started to act upon those things. She started to let those things ignite. And, and I think that's definitely where you are in your life right now. It's going to, in some sense, you're going to have to be bold and realize you're worth it. You are worth some of those steps. And it was bold coming to Utah for that, uh, that whole week, whole month actually, of, uh, of the mystery school. And that was a bold move. And then, and yeah, that was the first. That was almost like you're just lighting the rockets. But the rockets have to fire and lift you out of that gravity of this perception of yourself. So I'm glad that you felt called to come on. The, the magnitude idea drew you onto this uh, retreat because, you know, I, we can see you smiling now. We know, we know it's there. We know the spark is there. But you've got to really fan, the, fan those flames you know, to, to really make your move now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, as soon as someone starts to say, I'm tired of this, I'm tired of this, I'm t that means you're ready. <laughs> you're, you're done, you're done. There's no more, it's like chewing gum. You've chewed it, there's no more juice in it. You've been forgiving it, forgiving it, and now it's done, you know, it, it needs to, to be taken out, it's time, you're ready. You, you've got nothing to lose now. You're just ready to go for it. So we're so with you, Tina. So with you. Mm. <laughs> oh. Okay, next up is Beth. Go ahead, Beth. Oh, wow. Okay. Oh, hi, everyone. Can you hear me? Yeah. Hi, Beth. Dr. Hey. Beth. Dr. Beth. <laughs> <laughs> oh, this is <laughs> oh, David, you have no idea how this is uh, hitting me, like, on every level. Mm -hmm. And I'm so new, you know, with this group and, you know, with you and, um, you know, Course in Miracles. And uh, so I'm going to try to get this out. But yeah, stepping into magnitude. So my uh, way of doing that, my ego-based way, and what I've been on this journey with alternative medicine, and I, I took the bold steps. <laughs> I took the freaking bold steps. I, my son, it, okay, the images are my son, I believe, was injured by a medical procedure. I don't want to get into it, but, and I, I said, you know, this is unacceptable, God. <laughs> and I didn't feel supported by my community or my church or my, you know. so I'm like, screw you, I'm doing it. So I got a divorce 
I said, I am going to be an alternative medicine practitioner and this is God's calling. And, um, and it was, it's been, uh, joyful and wonderful. And I love what I'm doing, acupuncture and alternative medicine. And I found, uh, I just had, I was healing. I had a session before this, um, session and it was joy. I had the, the music playing and, a, a patient that I love and and it just was and she and we shared something about our you know personal lives and it was just I, I couldn't be happier but you know the the reason I got into this was because I really do believe that um, the medical industry is harming people <laughs> bodies <laughs> they're harming bodies they're harming minds they're harming spirits I saw it in my son and I it it's makes me crazy, you know, and I, I have to let it go because I can't, I'm, I've actually completely crashed. <laughs> like everything's great. I have this great business. I have this, but it's not, uh, yeah, I see that I don't have, I still don't have control over it. You know, and I, still, you know, like it's still happening and people are still falling for these toxic things. And, and I, and I get into what that righteous anger. I'm, I'm glad you brought it up because that's been my main coping strategy. That's it, you know, <laughs> shame and then guilt and then fear, like fear, like I'm afraid of everyone. Like, you know, because I can't trust them because they don't understand the things that I understand, you know, and so, you know, like I'm afraid of the doctors and this, and, and then you get into this, craziness you know and then they gotta so i'm new and i'm just gonna share that i just i i i want to thank everyone this has been a really intense week for me my father passing i'm dealing with that and and all of this is my first retreat this is all new and i i want to thank you guys because i the group of women reached out to me once studied acupuncture like, how crazy is that, Mary? I mean, and we shared yesterday, we talked for hours on like acupuncture and this and that, and how amazing. So, and, and it, was a, it was an answer to prayer because all of this makes me feel isolated and, you know. So, thank you. And I'm just putting it out there and I needed this. And, I know, no real words of wisdom from me, but that's that. Thank you for everything. Thank you. Thank you, Beth. We love you so much. And, and we've, I know when you start to see the things that, that are not working in the world, that there can be a lot of anger associated with that. And then, and then we're open. We always do the best that we can based on what we believe. And so, of course, for you, it's shifted to alternative medicine and then, and then metaphysics and the mind and we think more that psychiatry and psychology, you know, are supposed to be those areas that delve into the mind. But actually, people get disillusioned with that too, with all the prescription drugs. And, and they think, oh my God, it's the same game that's in politics, it's in medicine, it's in churches. It's, it's all the way through the fabric of everything in time and space. And it's, it's actually a precious moment when we find each other and we join with each other, like you and Mary, uh, and, and those, as we keep connecting in, it's, it's a journey of discovery. It's, a, it's an adventure of going into recognizing the power of our mind and, and our strengths, our true strengths. And, and not beating ourselves and judging ourselves for anything that we seem to do, because we always are just trying to do the best that we can to escape from a very dark uh, perception of ourselves and the world. And so I just appreciate your transparency. We just see it all over your face. We feel how happy and appreciative and eager and we all share that with you. And, and uh, let, I'd, let's just celebrate this as a, as a beginning. Because uh, I always tell people when I meet them, you know, the, we're on a lifelong journey now towards true happiness. And it will be a journey where we'll have to face some things, but also we will have our moments of celebration at, at the insights. And uh, we're just really grateful. We're grateful you're with us. So thank you. Thank you, Beth. 
Yeah, it's beautiful, Beth. And I'm so, um, just that you shared some of the motivation underneath or what like impelled you in the direction, because it's often underneath, you know, there can be an egoic motive or it's out of guilt, or it's out of really wanting to change the world. And so just to be able to fully bring that to the light so that any motive that's underneath fear can be lifted from you and you can truly be used as a miracle worker with the pure intention of healing that's right there in your mind, you know, for your whole practice and for, for the holy purpose that the Spirit's gonna use you through, you know, more and more in your in your practice. So I'm so grateful that yeah, it can really bring anything that's unlike just the pure love, you know, the miracle <laughs> that wants to use you to the light. So your your whole practice can be such a blessing to the world. So thank you. <laughs> She's tr a treasure. <laughs> She's a treasure, Jackie said. <laughs> I don't know if you heard that. <laughs> she speaks very quietly sometimes. But <laughs> Yeah, it's, it's a joy to meet you. <laughs> okay, next on the list is Anna. Go ahead, Anna. Can you hear me? Yes. Hi, Hi Anna. Thank you. Um, first time I'm speaking, I was looking at the watch just a second ago to see if I was going to have time or not. Um, the one thing I wanted to, to talk to you about is um, by the end of the year, by the end of 2018, I started feeling tired, tired with what um, my life has become. Um, I, I trained as a radical forgiveness coach. I'm a, a photographer and a picture editor that sort of ended by the end of 2015 and ever since. The, the course came into my life and it's been um, my companion ever since. But now it seems that what I'm doing with radical forgiveness, even though I'm, I'm putting a lot of the course material in, seems to have brought me to a point where um, like I'm having sessions from 3 in the afternoon to 11 at night, for example, and I come back home feeling tired and then the next day, um, starting up at nine, and I feel like I don't have time for me, even though I'm trying to use all the sessions and, and the meetings I have with these wonderful people that are reflecting a lot of the stuff that I have to work with within my mind. Um, it's, 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 it feels tiring. So that makes me wonder, I mean, if, if what I'm doing is what I should be doing. I, I keep asking spirit for guidance and things keep um, unfolding in the very same way, even though I received a message from Jenny today um, about a retreat in Mexico that I was so much looking forward to, to go to La Casa and, uh, and spend some time with you. I, need, I feel I need some distance uh, to, to move away from, from what I've been doing, the way I've been doing it, and, and and we think it all, we, we feel it all. I don't know if that's the right way to put it, but to, I don't know. I, I don't really know, but um, these retreats have been wonderful. And uh, uh, they really get to my heart and, and it feels like my prayers are being answered inside. Um, and, and, I don't know, the, the idea that I should be helping the people I'm working with is also there, you see. And then it's, I'm not, I don't need to help anyone. I need to sort my mind, I mean, clear my mind about all these judgments and all these beliefs that something might be wrong. So, anyway, I wanted to share this with you. And thank you so much, all of you, for listening. Um, mm. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Yeah, it's, thank you for sharing that because uh, most all of us can relate to that where we throw ourselves so fully into service and, and being used. But, but for myself and many of us who have who've worked in helping professions, social services, counseling, 
we do know that in those fields there can be enormous burnout and uh, even in convents and monasteries they can reach uh, stages of huge fatigue and burnout uh, where the doer is still obviously involved, the, the doer self-concept. And, and one of the things I like about the Course is it's, it's saying, you know, you need a new purpose and, and the purpose of the, the body for the Holy Spirit is just as a communication device and then uh, the ego uses the body for pride and for pleasure and for attack. Those are very helpful discernment tools so, to really get clear on the purpose. But I have noticed for myself over the years and many professionals that have a lot of appointments one after the other for many hours, I've actually can relate to that because I had that for quite some time, that there is a next step that comes where, where you, there is a loosening uh, it's really a loosening from time and it's, it's, a, it's a permission to give yourself uh, the idea of being very intuitive and uh, sleeping when you feel to sleep and, and eating when you feel to eat and also the permission to, to do nothing, uh, to take away all the structure uh, because even though Jesus uses that metaphor of communication in the body many times, there is one place in the Course where Jesus comes right out and says, the body has no purpose at all. And I'm like, oh, he spilled the beans. He spilled the beans. He went past all those metaphors of communication device and he slipped over towards his I need do nothing uh, section. And um, that actually is a point that's very nurturing. Oftentimes it's just even for a phase where you are giving yourself permission to let go of the structuring of your life and to really let the Spirit guide you in a moment-by-moment -moment basis. And we do have different retreats where we, it's set up that way. It's set up with very, very little structure, very, very minimal structure, almost just to kind of ease you into it. And, and then uh, there are many functions as part of the ministry that do involve uh, communication, but it's beautiful that you're, you're speaking about that because once the fatigue is there, that's, that's a sign that, that there's something to come. There's another phase that's moving in and that you have to be very aware of what that is. So I'm glad you brought that up because that's, that's very important in terms of of being open and flexible to follow the guidance, uh, even if you've been doing something that on the surface uh, can seem to be extremely focused and helpful with the radical forgiveness sections, this is, is, is really for you to kind of loosen from the helper concept uh, and, and to start to really use your emotions as the barometer to uh, what is the prayer of, at the beginning of the book, I'm here to be truly helpful and you need to apply that to your mind right now. Yes. Thank you. Wow. Oh. Hmm. Precious. Ah, oh, well, we're winding down here. We're winding down. This has been quite amazing, really when you really look at it, the whole thing of, of magnitude because we're going beyond the opposites of magnitude and littleness of what the world would teach us into show me Lord, show me, guide me. You're going to have to show me the magnitude and, and we really have made that connection with, with function. And I just want to encourage everyone who's who's looking at their life in this world and their perception of themselves and the, those around them to just really take it to heart, to really see what is the purpose that I have given to the body and to those characters that are around me because I feel like that's going to be the most significant thing that you will do is you open to your magnitude, is really come to an honesty. Am I allowing the Holy Spirit to use this body and every body for the Great Awakening because it's that important? 
Or am I still using past roles, past concerns, past responsibility, past considerations to keep my brother and myself in chains? Because when we are very subtly doing what we think is right in terms of the world, uh, if it's based on the past, it's still very much of like a quicksand. And we're still moving our arms and legs around in that quicksand and it may feel like we're more stuck than free. And so that is like our prayer for everybody to really be honest with yourself when you look at what is the purpose. And even to allow yourself to that permission to rest, like Lenny and Gertie were just talking about, in the face of what seems to be an overwhelming swirl of busyness, your rest is of utmost importance, the rest of your mind. You have to be able to see that you are worthy to, to pause, to rest, in the face of what even seems like a very full, full day. And I'm right there with you in that, and we're all joining you so deeply in that, that you are so loved and so valuable. And we, we so much look forward to these online retreats. I can't tell you that at the beginning of the month, it's just such a delight for us to come and connect with you in this way. It's like, it's just so, so precious for us. So thank you, thank you, thank you. And, and Jackie, Kirsten, do you have some final words to share to all these beloveds? <laughs> yeah, what was coming to me is just echoing that. Like our, our magnitude comes from God. And where is God? But in the stillness of our mind. And our mind has to be present to receive and be aware of that gift. So, yeah, I just echo that. Um, prayer for everyone to feel and keep devoting the willingness to the permission, I let go, I let go of the need to know, the need to move, the need to take care, the need to focus on what is external, you know, the letting go of the past future focus and, and dare to continue, dare to take the risk to come back to this holy instant where we can receive the love, the support, the care, and the awareness of who we are. So. I can only say ditto to everything, really, <laughs> and just a great big thank you. So, until we meet again, go forth in joy, go forth in happiness. <laughs> oh, adorable. <laughs> oh, precious, precious, precious. Oh.